Today we have a great chance to see Bering 72 under construction in different stages. This hall we started about four months ago and now we're finishing the, the, the shell plates and in two weeks this hall will be turned in the correct position on the kill. So, and I don't know if you're familiar with this technology, most of the boats, especially smaller boats, they, they get constructed upside down. So instead of laying keel, we lay in deck. And then the boats start to get built up here. And this is the bulbous bow. You can see how much reinforcement this bow have. And we have 30 millimeters keel, so it's all connected and it's all reinforced by stringers and frames. So you can see how massive and in some cases we put concrete, uh, special concrete in this bulbous bulb. So and this is a collision bulkhead. You see it's a, it's a collision bulkhead. We don't have any hatches, any penetrations except uh, for like uh, pipe penetrations for hydraulics, for windlasses and stuff. So and this is all chain locker above this deck plate. Above, I mean below in this case. So, and this is not serviceable. This is kind of like locked out, this collision bulkhead. And we have a, a bilge pump there. So, and now I suggest we go inside and we walk the ceiling of the boat under construction. I bet it's unusual feelings. It's hard to understand where we are, but I will try my best to explain you. So right now we're entering into the lazarette. Uh, so this is the deck and this is the keel. Don't forget. Now we are in the lazarette and right above me is a gondola where the shaft pipe is passing through and so it's, it's quite tall. So you can see it's a good headroom in the lazarette. It's already uh, can feel. And now we are in the engine room. So you can see this big hatch. It's a, it's a soft patch. We never weld it. It's, it's gonna have a lead uh, on the bolts. So you can unbolt it and replace machinery if needed or if it's get outdated. You see now it's spacious in each corner. It's a day tanks, uh, one for port side, one for starboard, and generators also fed from the separate day tanks. So now it's spacious, but when all the equipment moved in, it's gonna be densely packed. And we are in a crew quarters slash pantry area. Um, it's a multi-purpose area. You can have it as a storage, fridges, pantry, work, workshop, little workshop, and also electrical panels could be here. And here you can see the aft main tank. So this is fairly flat main tank uh, here. And as you can see, the headroom is very good in this in this compartment uh, compared to bearing 65 so it's a normal height now we are in a middle compartment so it's a it's a guest rooms two guest rooms two heads here and all above my head is a tanks from side to side this whole area is a main fuel tanks. So you see how massive it is. This boat is packing 24,000 liters of fuel with the same consumption as Bering 65 in the vicinity of 30 liters at eight knots with generator. So this boat have Trans-Pacific range. It's over 6,000 miles, 24,000 liters. It's not a joke. Here we are at the entrance to the master stateroom. So it's all the way forward and with a private head. And this is the watertight compartment as well. So we have a watertight door here. And again, above my head is still the tanks. Now it's water, gray, black, and fresh water tanks here. So you've been on an upside down boat. 
we're actually standing on the ceiling uh, but you already can catch the volume of this boat uh, even in turned upside down condition and let's go to the boat which is upright and uh, in the advanced stage uh, I think the welding part is nearly finished I think some piping going on there let's see what we what we will see and how different it is so now we are in bearing 72 which is um, in the last stages of welding so it's getting ready for insulation it's getting ready for paint work we're on a swim platform you see the preparation for the transformer installation and here is a good size uh, transom door pantograph door and we just been on in the lazarette upside down and here you can see how it's in the upright position so it's very voluminous very spacious very good place for all the toys for excess of equipment for emergency generator emergency steering emergency fire pump that's the place for it so we're in a cockpit it's very spacious the first impression it's very spacious what i would like to point here we do usually stainless steel plating and stainless steel all mooring equipment is stainless steel so the underlayment is also stainless steel actually this plank is a stainless steel as well so we bolt the railing into the stainless steel so you will have no these brown rings around your stanchions so everywhere where the stainless attached we have a stainless steel underlayment the main thing it's have to be under fairing the stainless and mild steel have no reaction unless it's introduced to oxygen or substance like salt water so if it's encapsulated under the layers and layers of coatings so it's not reacting it stays like this forever almost <laughs> so we're attaching stainless to stainless that's the main thing another thing you can see here at this stage how we connect deck which is steel to the aluminum superstructure so this material called triclad part of it is aluminum part of it is steel and they introduce they they attach to each other with explosion so they connect it on atomic level and there is no reaction there so we're welding steel to steel and aluminum to aluminum and again it's very safe the whole industry is using this method for last many many years since these materials exist so it's very common thing but a lot of people asking this question how do you attach aluminum to steel like this welding and here is another very important detail this is the ventilation shaft so it's going straight to the engine room and the vent located here it's about three meters above the water line so no inclination pretty much any sea condition it's it's hard to reach this point so it's very safe and it's worked very nice very straight shoot uh, very very good ventilation system very important to have it not under the deck to have it as high as possible so we are in the salon and now you see how open the layout is and it's mid-ship galley and very spacious uh, pilot house forward you see it's basically one space and we want to keep it as one space so we open the galley to the salon and also we have a petition and sliding door which opens the uh, pilot house to the salon and galley so technically you can be here and talk to the person in the pilot house so we make the stairs to go 
everywhere, but we actually using just part of it. It's very strong. All stairs, it's kind of reinforcement. And as you can see, all our stairs is fabricated of metal. That's why it's no squeaking. Uh, it's very firm, very solid. And we're in a pilot house. You can see how protected. It's very, very tall. The ball works throughout the boat is 900 millimeters plus railing. It's a classic explorer. It's raised pilot house in the US called Trawler, uh, but it's, it's much more than Trawler. Uh, it's a global navigator with a trans-Pacific range of close to 6,000 miles with lots of storage. It's a perfect vessel for own operation or for crew of two with six passengers on board. It's very sustainable and it's very capable. And function of this same as a super yacht and level of comfort is the same. Same noise, vibration or less even. So and safety, which is most important. So let's let's see the deck here and then we will go downstairs. The forward part is flexible on this boat we can have a Portuguese bridge or we can have like on this boat is forward-looking settee with a table here it's a very very nice place especially you see this is the sockets for the poles we have this all this deck is covered we have only work deck which is this part all the windlasses bollards and everything consolidated on this up, upper deck so on all this part is for guests and owners so and it's covered from the sun easy removable five minutes you can set it up and fold it down now we're in the middle compartment it's two guest cabins and two heads here and now we're standing on the tanks so this is the framing for flooring and we do box and box interiors, so it's all kind of soft suspension here. Uh, we put sound deck, it's very important to put sound deck because noise travel through the tanks, especially when they're empty, when they filled up. It's, it's a buffer, it's a good sound dampener. But we have a very good sandwich of about 70 millimeters, about three inch of various material, which further isolate the noises traveling beneath the boat from the living quarters and you can see here it's a uh, excess hatches inspection hatches because every two five years these tanks have to be serviced cleaned repainted if it's water or gray or black tanks or we don't paint the nobody paint actually except some special application the the fuel tanks so they just need to be cleaned from sludge and sediments on the bottom. So in, from here you can see the master room. It's forward and we have a lot of space here for some excess of machinery and also we have a, a thruster tunnel here. And by the way, we have a small hatch. Um, it's, it's not open, I mean, you can open it, but it's more like an inspection hatch up forward to get into the bulb but sometime we completely close the bulb with some materials so you can see it's already flanges for all the piping uh, the piping is is a heavy duty piping you can see by looking on the flanges reminding you we use no hoses for 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 piping it's only rigid piping a lot of stainless steel lots of copper nickel ferrums and some proper super yacht materials. You see the space, space is enormous on this boat. And you feel it when you're leaving a board because for leave a board, you have a different requirements for your space, for your economics, because um, you can put up with something for two days, three days, maybe a week. But if you're leaving a month, two months, three months permanently, everything have to be a household standard. That's why we give uh, more volume, more headroom than many other boats. Liverboard. 
So now we are in crew quarter compartment. Crew quarter is optional. If it's uh, owner operator boat, it's not necessary. And it's, uh, you see how big the space for uh, refrigeration, freezers, pantry, storage, some equipment, electrical control panels. As you can see also as in other compartments, here it's all bottom is occupied by tanks. It's, uh, it's also the fuel tank and you can see this is the inspection hatches for full accessibility. When tank is done, we close it and then we check pressure. It has to hold the pressure for a certain period of time without dropping the pressure. And then when the piping installed, the same procedure going for piping. So the whole system with the pipes have to hold the pressure. So we checking before go any further, we checking for any potential leaks. If the pressure, if we're losing pressure, we have to find and address it at this stage. And finally, we are in the engine room. You know, we started with Lazarette, which is next, and make a full circle, and here we are. It feels so spacious, but there is no equipment, no piping here. Uh, and you see these big gondolas where part of the engine is lowered down. Actually, the engine top is about this level. So it's uh, underwater level. And of course, it's a lot of piping, exhaust, hydraulic system, and sea keeper. This is the place for the sea keeper. It's a position for the sea keeper. So in 65, the sea keeper only possible to install in the, in the lazarette, but here we can fit it in the engine room. And it's free up the space in the lazarette and it's more spacious to begin with. So it's a big difference. But you see guys how robust. Here is the sea chests. There are two of them. They welded on, you can clean them from the outside. They have a drop down grills. And so this is redundancy. And each of them is enough to supply sufficient amount of water for all users. In the corners, it's a day tanks. They're about 750 liters, which is enough for about 30 to 40 hours depends on the speed and sea condition. Let's watch this engine room. Let's see how it's getting tighter and tighter packed when equipment moved in, piping start to materialize. You'll see how densely it will be packed. Fascinating.